The Beyond Juba project held the 5th Beyond Juba Distinguished Lecture at the Imperial Royal Hotel in Kampala on the 22nd of June 2011 on the theme Assessing the Current Winds of Change, Which Way Forward. The lecture engaged members of the public on the mind-boggling questions in North Africa. A transitional justice project of the Refugee Law Project, Human Rights and Peace Center, and the Faculty of Law, Makere University, the BJP is funded by the Swedish International Development Agency and the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The lecture series is a forum for eminent national and international leaders, academics and policy makers to share their knowledge and perspectives on leading issues related to the growing field of transitional justice. The series offers an opportunity for university and the Ugandan community to engage and share experiences with leaders who have participated or contributed towards developing cutting-edge transitional justice policies. The fifth Beyond Juba Distinguished Lecture was a conversation between Dr. Firoze Manji and Bishop Zak Niringie, moderated by Dr. Chris Dolan, Director of the Refugee Law Project. Dr. Manji is a Kenyan activist with more than 40 years experience in international development, health and human rights. Dr. Manji is the founder and former executive director of Fahamu Networks for Social Justice. Dr. Manji spoke about African awakenings with examples of events that took place in Tunisia and Egypt that led to the downfall of Ben Ali and Mubarak and what triggered the awakenings. In both cases, it was not only the repressive nature of Ben Ali and Mubarak regimes, but the accumulated years of experience of pauperization of the majority, while a few enriched themselves. It is true that people across the continent have been inspired by these uprisings. There's no doubt about that. But that inspiration is enforced, re made real, by the common experience of pauperization that we have all experienced across this continent over the last 30 years. In Tunisia and Egypt, we see a strategy being unfolding whereby the uh, international community, so-called, is busy creating Benalism in Tunisia without Ben Ali. In Egypt, we see the creation of Mubarakism without Mubarak. There's a wonderful irony. If one actually understands the nature of Mubarakism, it consisted of three important factions. One was the Mubarak family and its grip on the, on the Egyptian economy. Two was the military and its senior officers who owned very large proportions of the Egyptian economy. And three was the Muslim Brotherhood who were uh, delegated, even back in the days of Sadat, uh, to uh, control over the media of education and other social welfare, but in particular over television. What is happening today? Today, they are talking with and constructing a regime built of the military and the Muslim Brotherhood. That is Mubarakism without Mubarak. Bishop Zak analyzed the roots of governance, challenges in sub-Saharan Africa and quoted cases where leaders become larger than institutions, thereby becoming institutions themselves, the continued backwardness in Africa, the pillars of autocratic rule, a case study for Uganda with interesting quotes. Yes, seven issues identified are simply symptoms of a more daunting challenge of leadership that has bedeviled Africa since independence. The roots of the governance crisis lie in lack of good leadership, good political leadership, and weak institutions. These two, leadership and institutions, are the two most critical pillars to deliver good governance. However, I would argue that of the two, the problem of leadership is a priori. It is a case where the leaders become larger 
and bigger than institutions. The leaders themselves becoming the institutions. Put differently, it is a case, a cycle of what I call autocratic tribal leadership. It is autocratic tribal leadership that accounts for the governance rules of Africa. Is it any wonder, my friends, that sub-Saharan African countries have been embroiled in violence, I should say African countries, not just sub-Saharan, for the last three decades? May I please continue with these amazing observations by Professor Aite. In 2000, he observed this, I quote, year after year, remember he's writing in 2000, year after year, since 1985, one country after another has imploded with monotonous regularity. Ethiopia, 1985. Angola, 1986. Mozambique, 1987. Sudan, 1991. Liberia, 1992. Somalia, 93. Rwanda, 94. Sierra Leone, 95. Zaire, Congo, 1996. Burundi, 97. Congo, Brazzaville, 98, Ethiopia, stroke Eritrea, 99. And then he adds, writing in 2000, currently, civil wars raging in at least 14 countries, whole states have collapsed, and infrastructure has crumbled. I found this addition very interesting, writing in 2000. And he says this, more distressing, several other African countries are standing in the line. This is 2000 when he wrote. Ready to blow up. Here his list. Cameroon, Kenya, Togo, and Zimbabwe. You would think Professor Aite was a prophet of biblical times. His prophecy was fulfilled in amazing detail. The point I'm making is this. The challenge is autocratic tribal leadership. Let me illustrate for this our country. He did speak about Mubarakism. Isn't it time to us, for us to be very ruthless, honest, that we have definitely what we might call a Museveni factor in Uganda's recent history. In fact, we can safely honestly speak about something called Musevenism. We don't have to wait to have a crisis to discuss this. And I think along the lines he has helped us, reflecting on Mubarakism, let's reflect together honestly Musevenism. And when I say Musevenism, please don't get me wrong. It's not all bad. There are some good in this Museveni factor. Let's acknowledge it. Let's acknowledge it. So let's have a sober. It is my view that if the ruling party does not engage with this, that party is lost. That if this country does not robustly ask questions related to this, we do not have a hope. I have stated publicly and privately that the most significant challenge this country faces is the transition from President Yoweri Museveni. 